So my name is Jennifer Reif, um, and I'm a uh, developer relations engineer at Neo4j, uh, which means I get to work on a lot of the cool integration projects and kind of connections between Neo4j and lots of other tools and systems out there. I recently was uh, worked on kind of redesigning the uh, developer guides on our site, and so kind of giving it a new look and feel, as well as trying to update uh, what is it our users need? Uh, what are things that are kind of missing in their uh, learning process for how they use the tools? What information do they need in order to build uh, some of these tools and the applications that they're dealing with? Um, things that are kind of upcoming, um, I'm hoping to work on some more applications, so do a little bit more with our uh, Spring Data uh, Neo4j project, and we're getting some reactive capabilities that are going to go along with that. So I'm looking forward to kind of diving in on the on the reactive side of things and, and building some stuff with that, and then, of course, showing other people how to do that uh, as well. Uh, I think it's kind of along the same thread, um, but kind of two different things. So one is there are absolutely tons of integrations. Uh, so pretty much any tool you're working with, any type of system you're using, there's probably some connector out there somewhere that lets you feed data back and forth between Neo4j and all these other systems and tools. Um, and then the other thing is just the flexibility of the model and of Cypher itself. Um, it kind of uh, opens up this whole new world that you don't really get with a lot of other database uh, structures. Um, so just the flexibility of adapting the data model and looking at how things are related and connected, I think is really powerful. So I think one of my favorites has to be um, in the in medicine and science. So looking at uh, how either uh, medically diseases are propagating uh, through through networks and how can we fight, you know, using things like algorithms or um, even just regular cipher and just looking and analyzing the connections uh, between atoms and molecules and, and different things to try to solve some of this really complex uh, uh, problems out there. And, even mappings of the brain. And uh, I know they're doing a lot with like species and animal uh, kind of uh, uh, bioscience and things like that. I think it is really interesting. Um, and then uh, just something like um, as simple as mapping your IT network, <laughs> which, which totally makes sense when you look at it as a graph. But um, I think seeing that that way really kind of gets that concept of, of graph and what it's actually doing and how it's connecting things together uh, that makes it a little bit more physical, I think, that relationship. So. So the toughest thing I would say, and probably the coolest thing for us is when uh, you have to get users to think so far outside the box, because it's different from anything they've ever done with uh, relational databases or document databases or any other type of NoSQL. Um, you're dealing with kind of that network science, that graph theory. Um, and so explaining that to users and trying to everybody grasps things a little bit differently. Um, everybody learns slightly differently. So trying to apply uh, graph theory in the different ways where people kind of get that aha moment. Um, I think that's really rewarding is to finally see it click for somebody and go, oh, I need to use this. I know exactly where to use this now. Um, I think that's probably one of the, the best things of getting to teach it and show developers how to use it. You don't necessarily need to throw out everything you know, but I think it's really just kind of opening the, those concepts um, where they don't limit you. And knowing that you have those boundaries uh, that you're used to um, and then figuring out, okay, but this is something that's totally outside of those boundaries. How can I plug in something that's new into my already existing knowledge? Um, so it's, it's kind of thinking outside the box a little bit, being a little bit creative uh, and willing to kind of step out and look at something that's a little bit different. I think it's the contributions. So we have a lot of, um, not even just technical projects that get contributed back, um, but the people who write blog posts on what their perspectives are for learning the technology or working with this particular tool. I think it really helps us see what users really uh, want and are looking for and are using actually out there. And then maybe the things that they struggled with, uh, the things they had trouble uh, using or finding the, the connections for. 
Uh, and so I think that's one thing, uh, not only just the, the technical projects, but then the blog posts and the questions that get asked on our community site, uh, on our forum. And, and so just seeing where the gaps are, as well as the things that are working really, really well and that users love. So I think graph in general is going to get a whole lot bigger um, because uh, we always like to say, you know, the world is is very connected. And I think the world is just going to get smaller as far as all the connections go. And so you're going to have people that want to relate all this data um, that seemingly doesn't relate. Um, but putting that into Neo4j, you'll see kind of those hidden connections. So I think in general, it's going to grow, um, but not even just past that. I think the uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning area is really going to explode. <laughs> so uh, you're going to find uh, people wanting to, to build more solutions for that sort of thing. You're going to want to let these processes kind of learn uh, on the fly, that graph native learning. And I think you're going to see that just continue to improve and get better and better. Um, and technology will move with that too. So.